the side. It looks like it will be Pro Aim on Team 1. And yeah, the sheet was a bit outdated apparently, so. Alright. Pro Aim Team 1 and Veterans Team 2. Okay. Pro Aim Team 1. Veterans Team 2. And... There we go. Okay, great. Okay. Let's do this. And we're off. Epic. Once more in the fray. I... I'm looking forward to this one. This is probably my favorite matchup that I've seen so far coming into this. Just in terms of hype. Like this is here on the left hand side it is Team Pro Aim, Helicopter and MCC. Playing as Pinch Fist, so we're going to see some greedy rush goods. Playing against their opponents, it's Team Veterans. Eaton and Firework. Also playing as Pinch Fist. So we're going to see the uh the greediest of rushes in the mirror match of some of the highest tier, highest caliber, and strongest forts players in the community, period. And that, uh, that makes me happy. It makes me very happy. Very excited. This is so much eco. <laughs> this is so much eco, he says. Well, we certainly have a disparity in economic uh, economic capabilities here. As the left side pro aim is going up to six mines after having started with three mines before getting heavy weapons tech. Whereas their opponents, team veterans, are on four mines apiece. Which is not many mines. But it's what we've got. Funnily enough, both teams picked the exact same commanders each time. They picked the same commander, gold for similar strats. Uh, except for Firework, who's gone for the Swarm Missile Rush. Or rather, should I say the Nuclear Rush. Somewhat different than the other players. On the right-hand side, Team Veteran is going for a laser rush. I imagine the typical fire beam plasma beam. Uh, supported by the swarm missile rush which is going to swiftly be upgraded into nukes. The token EMP launcher coming in because they can. Pro aim on the other hand is going pure heavy weapons rush, which is expected. Oh, that's so painful. Wow. That is so rare to be able to do. Just in terms of, well, swarm missiles not being particularly good at doing the whole snaking under the base thing. Uh, they did manage to take out two mines, which is just incredibly painful. Uh, that's going to set back team pro aim to some substantial degree. That burst saw is doing so much right now. It is. I was about to say, the Swarm Missiles as well. Swarm Missiles is known for their unyielding hatred of all things exposed wind turbines. And, uh, well, there are plenty of exposed turbines to be hunted. Wow. 
Wow. Oh no, it hits both laser beams. Oh no. It's so, so painful. Like, it doesn't hurt that much, but it hurts enough that it just... It's... It's suffering. It's just one of those yeah, minor nuisances. It's emotional damage. And he does it again. Well. Um, this is T Pro Aim's life now. They don't really have a sniper on the field. So they're not going to be stopping this in the near future. As the nuke has completed. Oh boy. Here comes the first warhead launch. We'll be protected by Firebeam. Not that it needs it, because there's no anti-air currently active for Team Pro Am. As uh, now the fire beam is penetrating deep and causing some singe damage to everything in MCC's oh, for the battery. Almost gets it too. But here's the thing: Team Pro Am for all the pain they've suffered. They have their weapons placed and under construction. So there's limited time before those super heavy weapons come online and wreak vengeance upon their opponents. Team Veterans is, of course, attempting to end the game, or at least send Team Pro Aim back to the Dark Ages before, before those heavier weapons can come online. But I suspect that's not going to happen. I think Team Pro Aim will be successful in bringing those heavy weapons up. The question then is how much damage will they deal? And will Team Veterans be able to recover from it? And I'm not sure. The only way to the only way to know is to find out. And way to find out is to wait a few more seconds for those weapons to send their volleys across the field. Swarm missiles again, hunting wind turbines, no big surprise. Nuke distracted by a blade of armor, as here comes the first volley of the plasma beam fire beam. Cuts deep, but doesn't break anything of import. Eaton firing their own plasma beam. At this point, Team Pro Aim has more heavy weapons at their disposal than Team Veterans, but Team Veterans has massive amounts of map control and has caused substantial damage to Team Pro Aim. Yeah, you, yeah, that's. Not usually what you want your base to look like, you know, being all on fire and such. Team Pro Aim needs to get that howitzer firing as soon as possible. And uh, they may not be able to meaningfully fire it for a time yet, as Team Veterans has fairly substantial amounts of anti air, which will likely shut down that howitzer. And so we're seeing Team Pro Aim invest heavily into more snipers and similar weaponry in an effort to take map control, but it's maybe too little too late. Team Pro Aim, despite having the superior firepower, does manage to lose their fire beam and plasma beam. That puts them, well, missing the firepower. And firepower advantage they once had is just no longer present as Team Veterans is t whittling them down, shot for shot. And here comes another volley out of Team Veterans. And yet Pro-Aim has not fired their howitzer just yet. And, uh, well, they may not have an opportunity if they don't get to, fi if they don't get to firing it soon. But again, they don't really have an opportunity to fire it as it's once again hit by an EMP. And remember that howitzers can be shot down out of the sky. Pro aim in order to land that howitzer needs to take some manner of map control as you see them attempting to do with this sniper. They need to remove some of those gunners, they need to clear the skies. And it's just not happening. Team P Veterans has so much map control that it's just pure supremacy. And for it, Team Pro Aim can't bring their weapons to bear, at least not consistently. They can always attempt to fire the howitzer, just to gamble it and see if it happens to make it across, despite all the odds being against it. But that's that's a Hail Mary play. 
And Team Pro Aim is not here for Hail Marys. They're here to win. And, uh, well, it's not looking good for them so far. Oh, ho, ho, the shotgun. And there it is. The howitzer shot across, but does not make it. Pro Aim was using their sniper in an attempt to control the map to some substantial degree, but that just wasn't enough. The sniping happens back and forth at this point. Pro Aim might be able to make their shot across if they fire the howitzer on cooldown. It's just going to be close. And particularly expensive. Yeah. Yep, that's not happening. Yeah, that's not happening anymore. Okay. That's, uh... Helicopter goes down. Just not even a door snipe, just going straight through the center, blowing through everything and taking out the howitzer directly. Uh, helicopter falls. With MCC, now the final member of... Of nothingness, yes. <laughs> and with that, Team Veterans goes 1-0 over their opponents. Pro away. Into round two. Here we go. A beautiful mirror match. A very different strategies. The early game pressure versus the heavy weapons rush. Um, what we see here is... I'm going... I'm going to describe that more as a victory in execution rather than strategy. Yes, there were significant strategic differences, but it really came down to map control that made, which was the deciding factor between victory and defeat. Okay, so now we will swap the teams for real this time. All right. And we'll see how it goes. I want to say shout out once more to Mr. Zabum coming in with that super chat. That <laughs> another megaton is what it is. Dropping in the 100 euro. Taking that top spot for the live stream. Taking that top spot for the Pro League kickoff. And we'll uh be hanging out there for the duration of the stream. I'm glad you enjoy. Thank you, thank you. All right. Teams are set, match is made. Once the players have readied up, we'll be starting. Ready with ping. Oh, no. That is true. We have an American team versus a European team here. The ping difference <laughs> Firework will Firework might as well matter. be next door. <laughs> Firework might as well be next door. That's true. Fireworks sitting on same state levels of ping. Uh, whatever Firework is up, that is. Oh, speaking of which, the one player who's not ready. All right, let's go. And we're off once more. The sides have swapped, but the teams are the same. Here we have on the left-hand side, it is veterans. Firework and Eaton selecting the Armordillo commander. Looking to uh, get themselves some of that extra beefy defenses. They're playing against their opponents, Team Pro A, Firework, and MCC, some of my favorite competitors here at the Forts Pro League. Playing as the Warthog Commander, we could expect to see some heavy weapons coming out from Team Pro A, which is... I'm going to describe it as a fairly standard style of play. Uh, the empowered heavy weapons are just that many levels of powerful. <clears throat> That's uh, it's a good time all around. 
For as standard and common as the play may be, it really does leave for the most options. Because once the heavy weapons come onto the field, all the little things matter. You gotta make sure all of your defenses are in the right places, your map control is on point. And it leaves from many different angles of attack. If you manage to take map control away at this point, then you can shut down your opponents, defend your base flawlessly, and slowly grind your opponents into the ground. Or just manage to get a little bit of an economic investment. It's just so many different ways to win. And uh, it looks like every player involved is... I'm going to watch Team Veterans here for a moment. I was about to say that every player involved is looking to uh, take things nice and slow, but I do see an upgrade center. Which is always a cause for concern. Um, although Eaton's just kind of saving up cash, which is... This looks like it is a build meant to go heavy weapons tech. Okay, there we go. Heavy weapons tech with a sidestep for the upgrade center. Which is something that we usually see out of the Armadillo Commander. Um, as I've mentioned before in the Forts Amateur League match, the Armadillo Commander is very capable of defending itself. So it isn't at all uncommon to see a side grade investment into economy rather than weaponry. This allows the players to get a bit more of an advantage going into the later stage of the game at the cost of, well, getting weapons out at a timely manner. In either case, it looks like Firework from Team Veterans is going for a more standard heavy weapons rush, while Eaton is going for the economy heavy version so they'll have some as a team total they'll have some economic advantage going into the later game over pro aim that is of course assuming that team veterans manages to survive the first two minutes of the cannon o'clock timing uh, which is not a guarantee given that helicopter has gone for these delicious beautiful howitzers and mcc has gone for the fire beam plaza beam combo which is, as you guys may know, extraordinarily devastating against any target. So we may not, we may see Team Veterans here losing a player or at least becoming uh, irreparably damaged due to uh, we, cannon to clock firepower. We do see a shotgun ready for potential howitzer, so. Indeed. Eaton well aware that howitzers are the standard for this map. It looks like actually Eaton's gonna be going for a howitzer themselves, I think. This is that's a howitzer box, but Eaton doesn't have the uh, storage for howitzer. So I don't I don't know if he's gonna put a cannon in the howitzer box or if he's just gonna build the storages at some point. I guess we'll find out sooner or later. Either way, uh, we do see some anti howitzer tech coming out of team veterans here. Which is not at all a surprise. I believe we're going to see similar anti howitzer tech for Team Pro Aim, despite no one on the Team Veterans actually having constructed a howitzer yet. Um, more interestingly, uh, Team Pro Aim, it is about five minutes on the clock. Team Pro Aim is gearing up to launch their first major volley. Looks like they will be splitting their shots with the plasma beam, with the energy beams hitting the veteran's lower player and the howitzer hitting the upper player. Typically, it is most effective to focus your fire on a single player, although given the timing discrepancies between the teams, uh, starting with the fire beam on to Fireworks lower base is a great way to shut down everything. As now the focus fire comes in, and holy smokes, Eaton's base cracks in half, but doesn't fall. Held together by stability tech and a potentially purposefully manufactured breakpoint. Uh, that's gonna leave a mark. <laughs> 
That's going to be permanent deformation. There's your lasting damage that can't be repaired. Eaton does manage to survive, but the cost is heavy and dire. I expect we'll see a similar shot coming out from Team 2 momentarily, as that howitzer is reloading. It is almost time for Firework to begin firing their own weaponry. There's the howitzer. Ooh. The plasma beam follow-up from Team Pro Aim is disrupted, but not destroyed. So a lot of the damage that would have burned heavily and deeply into Eaton's base has been mitigated, but they still took a lot of repair bill. That howitzer still hit deep and the fire beam hit true. Oh jeez. It's uh it's not getting better here for team for team uh, veterans, is it? Eaton has been relegated to team punching bag, it would seem. As there's the penetrator round. Cutting all the way through Eaton's base, igniting foundations along the way. Uh, Firework is relegated to attempting to door snipe MCC. That's about all they can do. Um, a heavy hit. And by that I mean a fire beam goes directly to MCC's core, bringing it down to 4%. I mentioned a moment ago that Firework is attempting to door snipe, which is true, because there's really not much else Firework can do, but Firework did manage to find a single spot where they can directly hit the core. And uh, that left Team Pro Aim pretty much on the verge of death. Oh boy. Yeah, that's uh, it's not getting better for Eaton there. Eaton taking an extraordinarily heavy hit as once again MCC is being targeted. Which is not a surprise, it's just scary now because MCC is down to 4% total HP and there's no coming back from that, that kind of hit. Eaton just surviving as team tank. Finally does manage to place their own howitzer. Oh, hello. And with a vengeance, the snipers retort. <laughs> Those machine guns managed to shut down that single volley from the howitzer, but it costs them their lives. Oh boy. That's terrifying to see, just knowing that the, dis the explosion the secondary explosion from the uh, plasma beam is absolutely enough to completely destroy the entirety of MCC's base. So here comes an empower how it's around. Oh, scary. Empowered how it's around and cannon round. Getting pretty deep into Eaton's fortress, but it's not enough to break him. Just leave a few holes in their base. Some extremely well coordinated hits for out of Team Pro Am so far. Oh, that was a close, almost door snipe. At this point, the increased economy for team veterans is starting to make the difference here. We are seeing Eaton's base slowly expand like an amorphous amoeba, just gradually increasing in mass and slowly gaining its teeth. Despite all the damage it's received, it's just not enough to break Eaton here. Is eaten with all of these mines is just too much. 
Oh boy. An empowered howitzer? Broken. Jeez, every time. Every time Ethan takes a hit, it's from an empowered warthog heavy weapon. And it just it just does so much damage. It's it's incredible. And yet, Eaton remains. Oh, that was close. Oh, that was very close. Ooh, almost, a door snipe. almost a door snipe. That would have been likely game ending for Eaton had that managed to land. Oh, did he hit it? He got it. The door snipe on the fire beam, firework, loses one of their weapons. Here comes the empowering. Howitzer should be next. They're not ready to fire the howitzer? Do it, helicopter! Fire the howitzer! Uh oh. That's unfortunate. No howitzer fall, no empowered howitzer this time around. Not enough energy. It's scary every time that sandbag goes away. For MCC. Oh boy. Eaton is so close to being ripped off of his foundations. Oh, hello. Crazy hits. Whoa. Massive damage. A strike from below, bypassing the defenses. Firework lands the critical hit. Sending helicopter into a, uh, a incredibly rough position, leaving them down two cannons. And a full defend from Eaton with the shotgun. Helicopter sending a full volley of every heavy weapon, all of it empowered, doing zero damage to their opponent. And this may have been the turnaround that Veterans is looking to make. As the economic boost that they've started investing into 13 minutes ago finally paid off? It looks like it might have, as here we see Team Pro Aim suffering. Oh boy. And here it goes. One player down. MCC falls, burning to fireworks, fire beam. Only one remains. Helicopter, the one with all the firepower, with the howitzer, is currently on fire and burning. As here comes yet another volley out of Team Veterans. Shut down with a manually aimed shotgun. There it goes. Cut after cut, their base filled with lacerations and holes. Helicopter is <laughs> getting bullied now. Uh, hasn't yet broken, having been an advantage for almost the entirety of the match so far. Helicopters managed to build up a very large bank of defenses and thick armor plating, which is taking Team Veterans some substantial time to burn through. But burn and cut and dig they have. And ladies and gentlemen, down they fall. Well played, well played. A valiant effort, a close match, but Team Veterans comes out on top. Well played, everyone. Well, that was satisfying. Ah, yes. That was very close. Especially at the beginning when that first howitzer landed and Eaton's base literally cracked into two pieces.
Yeah, I didn't, didn't expect that at all. <laughs> but yeah, the, the battery hit at the start of uh, MCC was, yeah, it was painful. That was really bad. Um, makes me wonder, had MCC not taken that crit, if it would have been enough? I mean, it would have probably changed how uh, <laughs> how veterans would have played, I guess, but yeah. All right, so which is the next match here? Is this uh, Greenleaf versus... Uh... Uh, this is... No, this is... Um, how, does, how is it called? Uh, Rancy Preisverkleidscher. <laughs> Versus... Uh, versus uh, Pro-Aim still. Pro-Aim? Okay. Well, Pro-Aim left them. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they left, but don't worry. They're coming back. They're coming back. All right. So, Ran... Ran Sivergleicher? Ran Sivergleicher. High Sivergleicher, yeah. Sivergleicher. Uh, yeah, probably some hot take on the uh, Dampens and Pies pack nature, but <laughs> <laughs> with Ron C in it for some reason. It doesn't get old. I might ask Benzin to uh, change names. I'll just call him Paul. Or Benzin. Well, the thing is, there is this ongoing meme with uh, another FAL player who's called Pool Boy, and so a lot ah, of ranked okay. players are copying it. Okay. So yeah, <laughs> it would be best it, to do. It this. would be confusing in this context. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right. Too many players all stealing each other's names. I'm going to call him Benzene anyways. Yeah, Benzene is fine. There he is. Uh, let me check the teams. Okay, pro aim team one for the first match. All right. Oh, we do. And there we go. All right. Looks like we're all ready to go. Okay, when the players have rated up, we will be starting the next round, which should happen momentarily. Zaltzberg! And we're off. Time's up, let's do this. And we're off. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Forts Pro League, where here we have on the left-hand side, it is Team Pro Aim, where Helicopter and MCC are going to be capturing these balls on the Balls 2v2 map in an attempt to defeat their opponents, Team Ranci Vergleitsche. Rigor and Der Benzin are playing as the Armadillo Commander in this matchup. Sorry, their 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 logo is the Architect Commander, and if it almost yes, got me, confusing. it almost got me. <laughs> I saw Architect like, nope, wait, something something's wrong. Stop it. Look again. 
took me a moment. Uh, it, uh, he, yeah, Architect has a cool crown. It's like, wait a minute. Where did the crown come from? The Architect is good, but like, it's not, it's not that good. <laughs> oh, Lord. Either way, we are off to the races here. This is a mirror match with a commander that is known for taking a bit slower paced games with more economy than most. A bit of an interesting pick on Ball's map. Uh, this map with its massive expansion capabilities is known for swarm missiles and aggressive plays more than anything else. Swarm missiles from below, swarm missiles from above, because you can. And yet, everyone involved seems to be using all of this expansion power for additional economy. You know, haven't seen a match like this in a while. Looks like Team Rancivo Glacier. Going for heavy weapons directly. No tier 2 tech out of Team Pro. There we go. Munitions plant placed for MCC. Not sure which tech helicopter we'll choose. And it's munitions plants as well. So we're seeing double cannons out of pro aim, and then one kinetic and one energy heavy weapon for Team Rancivo Glacier. As we have a, well, a slow and gradual arms race which seems like a kind of a paradox you know arms race that is slow but that's nonetheless what we have as every team is investing much more into non non-explosive uh, infrastructure before things kick off We do see an upgrade center out of Team Pro Aim, specifically MCC in the lower base. May mean additional economic investment, is very likely. A potentially shotgun. Potentially. Or did, you, did this man seriously just put batteries in front of their base? You mad lad. Okay. Of all the places they could have put batteries. But. Helicopter getting the first cannon down. As we have the howitzer and cannon place for Durbensi. And in rigor, the top base. Fire beam, plasma beam. In terms of first to fire, I'm not sure. I think... Ah, it's gotta be close between rigor and helicopter. I think rigor will be firing first. That'll be a top player on the right hand team with their fire beam plasma beam. As everyone is massively expanding their defenses, as it is past cannon o'clock, and now everyone knows that the heavy weapons are going to be coming online in a moment. So they need to be defended to take those hits, and that is exactly what they are doing. I believe everyone is defended from every kind of attack at this point, with the exception of a direct hit on the doors of their heavy weapon emplacements. Double door while sufficient for a single 
hit from a heavy weapon does not defeat two of them. And every player involved has multiple heavy weapons. As we see, the first cannon fire actually hits Rigor. Ooh. Team 2, with their weapons coming online before Team 1, hits incredibly hard, rather rapidly. Everyone survives with no substantial damage dealt, although it's worth noting that MCC's primary defenses were breached just enough to splash 20% damage onto MCC's core, bringing them down to a total of 80%. It is time for Pro Aim to return fire. So we're gonna miss. Derbensi firing upon MCC. But no substantial damage was dealt. Uh oh. Fire beam plasma beam cutting through helicopters cannon emplacement. Removing one of them. Which is not usually how you want that to go. Uh, so. Pro Aim loses a, a substantial chunk of their cannon fire, their firepower in general. Not enough to knock them out of the game. They are still a very si significant threat on the field, but it will bring them down to uh, lacking game ending amounts of damage. Right now, Pro Aim simply doesn't have the firepower to end the game outright. Or break any heavily fortified location. Which is not a fun place to be because it feels like you just can't do much of anything, which is kind of sort of true. Um, however, Pro Aim is still very, very capable of uh, door sniping, as well as hitting any particularly lucky shots. The Pro Aim definitely on the back foot far from out of the game. Three buzzsaws slamming into uh, Durbensi's top half, chopping very deeply, causing a scary amount of deformation. At the moment, no one's really able to break anyone here. Despite the short range and perfect combo that Howitzer and Cannon from Rancy Verglasher does nothing to MCC. As another fire beam plaza beam actually cuts pretty deeply across helicopter's top. Say just a little off the top, does it quite cut doesn't quite describe what just happened helicopter here. His helicopter actually lost several mines in that shot. Uh-oh. There's the penetrative shot. Pro Aim loses their howitzer. MCC's howitzer and associated weapons are destroyed. That's going to cause some problems. Where once Pro Aim was just at a mild disadvantage, now they are almost sitting ducks. Having only a single cannon to their name, just between the two players, Team Pro Aim is now substantially lacking in firepower to the point where it's going to be difficult to make a comeback. Just because there's nothing really stopping Rancivir Glacier from just doing whatever they want. And what they want seems to be sending more cannons directly into Pro Aim's base. A second cannon finally completing for helicopter does send both shots up into Rensaver Glacier's laser array, but the laser array is far too protected at this point. It just doesn't deal any damage. It eats those cannons as if they weren't there. Oh boy. Derbensi going for blood, knocking MCC down to 63% as Helicopter and Rigor are just trading blows at this point. Doing what they can. Uh, helicopter needs much, much more firepower if they intend to break through anything on any of the players' bases. And, uh, well, 
MCC having no firepower zone is looking to <laughs> first survive the incoming firepower from Durbensi, which is proving to be not a simple task. But as it stands, MCC does have six upgraded mines, which will grant them significant economic power over their opponents. If they could survive for another 10 minutes, MCC would reasonably expect to eventually outgrow all oh, helicopters, core fully exposed and takes a hit from a plasma laser, but manages to survive. Bringing the core down to 61%. Scary numbers. Hmm. Helicopter is doing very well here. Despite being on the back foot, Helicopter is still managing to get their weapons out onto targets. Uh, if Helicopter can manage to get one more cannon, then we would see a potential and extremely... a potentially extremely destructive set of uh, outgoing damage. As those three cannons would be sufficient to break through Rigger's laser array and start turning this game around. Looks like Helicopter switching targets to the lower player, to Durbansin, which I think is a great call and probably a better decision than continuing to fire upon Rigger. Rigger is frankly fully capable of defending against two cannons indefinitely. Whereas MCC desperately needs saving at this point, needs rescue from a teammate. And also the top-down shots that Helicopter has on Durbensi. Durbensi is just not prepared for it. Mind you, Durbensi is in the process of becoming prepared for it. Uh, that's a process which is not complete, which gives Helicopter a window to deal devastating damage. More splash damage. MCC falls to 48% core as their defenses are once again slammed by high explosives. The real scary part is that Rigger is expanding their arsenal, adding in two swarm missiles, enabling them to penetrate energy shields. This means that Rigger will be able to break through helicopters defenses and start burning. Burning everything. Uh-oh. MCC takes more splash damage down to 42%. Derbensi's cannon defenses are fully complete and operational. Helicopter's cannons no longer able to meaningfully damage Derbensi's base. Once again, requiring that a helicopter move up to three cannons. But with a critical hit, helicopter loses their cannon production facility. That's gonna... That's devastating. Without their cannon production facility, helicopter cannot add additional cannons and therefore just doesn't have the ability to break through any of Derbensin's or Rigor's primary defenses. As Rigor is once again expanding their base, Adding in two more mines, bringing them up to a whopping nine mines. While none of those mines are upgraded, that is more mines than the rest that the other team. And either player on Team pro -Am. Oh boy. Quadruple buzzsaw from Pro M. Always a joy to see, but as it stands, their benzene, the recipient of such uh, privilege is fully metaled up and does not take any damage from said buzzsaws. Oof. 
Jabensi not liking those buzz saws does destroy them with their own cannon. As we've yet to see Rigor fully expose and reveal those swarm missiles. At least, not yet. Waiting for the right moments. Or perhaps waiting for the upgrade to nukes. Yeah, it's waiting on the upgrade to nukes. As we have the nukes in place in the top right corner. Oof. Oh boy. MCC takes a heavy hit. The Howards are chunking through MCC's last bit of defense. Sending the entire front of their fort down into the abyss. Hmm. How are these teams going to wind this one out? A long match as another team is substantially increasing their firepower. Durbensi, despite having such a large base, has not significantly increased their firepower in a long time. There's a good hit. Cutting deep, MCC is going to have to pay a hefty repair bill from that last volley. Oh boy. Helicopter has not regained their technology. The once lost tech has not been reobtained. However, Helicopter has reconstructed their economy, putting them back on par with the other players. They may be investing into technology next. Would certainly give them the ability to, well, rebuild what was once lost. Pure kinetics coming out of Durbensi, the right side lower base. Howitzer and 20 mil and cannon, they complete all three types of cannons. Uh, this is... yeah. That's a lethal amount of firepower. Double nuke, ignited and incendiary, goes straight to helicopter's core, and that is the end of helicopter. From about full to dead, Rigor's burst damage of nuclear firepower is enough to end Helicopter's base. And without Helicopter, there's nothing keeping MCC in this match, as MCC is about to get slammed by the combined might of the entire Rensaver Glacier firepower. And there they go. Burning down, MCC falls, giving the victory to Ren Sieverglasher. Well played, well played. Alrighty then. On to round two. Are the uh, teams the same size? Same side. One moment while we get this next match set up.
one moment as the players are requesting a minute break. We'll be starting off this match when they return. Okay. New season of the Pro League? Yes. Yes, new season of the Pro League, which makes me very excited. Actually, it makes me wonder, as these are all um, European contestants, at least for this match. It is possible that we get, or at least I don't know if Zeltsvuk is willing and able to host. So I'm currently the only American in the uh, in the lobby and the host. But for now, it looks like the players are ready. So we'll be starting the match right now. And we're off. Okay, here we go. Off to round two. Here we have, as the sides have been swapped, it is Team Ran Sivogleiter on the left hand side playing as the Pinchfist Commander. Pinchfist, for those sweet, beautiful, and incredibly risky rushes, selling off pretty much everything for that 100% retail value to boost their economy and their tech and everything else. We'll see exactly how they uh, how they allocate their funds this time around. They're playing against Team Pro Aim here on the right hand side, playing as the Pinchfist Commander, most known for those incredibly greedy rushes, selling off all those everythings and those internal goodies to bootstrap their technology and economy and anything else that they so please. Thanks for all those dramatic and entertaining matches as they were. Hmm. So far, the strategies and the builds are very similar. Uh, right now, Pro Aim is investing more into economy than tech, whereas Team Ransaver Gleitra is investing more into tech than economy. This means that Rancivic Leiter will have their tech out and potentially their weapons out faster. However, Pro Aim will inevitably end up with a stronger economy. As you can see here, uh, MCC is just now finishing their tier one technology and just placed their tier two technology. Whereas Rancivic Leiter, both players are about halfway done with their heavy weapons tech already. Which is a substantial difference. Of course, as it stands, we have Benzine here, who is uh, n still constructing two of their mines, compared to MCC, which has had all six of their mines constructed for a, a fairly substantial amount of time. So that's that's uh, that's a good time all around should give it an excellent description or at least an example of the differences between these two teams at least the build orders despite running the same commander there are options all right the first Heavy weapon has been placed. Team Rensiva Glacier, lower player, Rigor, has placed a plasma beam inside and underneath their core. One of the greedier places to put a heavy weapon does technically fit there, but of course is directly exposed to the core, so if something goes wrong, it goes very wrong, but is altogether one of the easiest locations to defend. As we have an EMP directly hitting Rigor's core, dealing 9% damage and shutting everything down. That uh, token EMP coming in 
extremely high in the value. Helicopter with that EMP is going to be an absolute menace. Rigor suffering immensely from uh, just a quick shutdown. Another beautiful hit, disabling Derbensin's howitzer, locking it at one quarter production for some time. That EMP has just gone unchecked for far too long. Where are your snipers? On Sivergleitcher. What are you doing? They're rushing heavy weapons is what they're doing, and they are absolutely getting harassed by that EMP. Worth its weight in gold at this point. Helicopter and MCC constructing heavy weapons of their own. Still notably behind their opponents. But that EMP has let them catch up, as it were. Another hit. It's devastating. It's a disaster. And Severglash's plasma is still going to complete before... MC's uh, for uh, MCC's plasma, but it's only going to be a difference of a few seconds, which just leaves Pro Aim's earlier investment into economy that much faster to pay off. Oh my! Oh dear! You know, given the sudden and rapid development of the defenses for Team Rancivergleicher, Wigger may not even fire their plasma beam first, despite p building it first. Oh! And some over-penetration! Laser beam entering one side and passing through, exiting the other of Durbensin's fort, dealing not much damage. And does it cut deep? Not quite. A little, little bit of a mis-aim. Doesn't quite focus those beams. And so what could have been an absolute, potentially game-ending shot, uh, just splashes across helicopter's armor, dealing very little damage. On the other hand, Rigor takes a heavy hit, knocking their core down to 57%. Look at that, even helicopter firing their weapons before Durbensin gets their howitzer onto the field. Or at least, into the air. Durbensin is now looking to, uh... return with glorious cannon fire. Uncontested skies. Wow! That shotgun not Did the shotgun not fire? It did fire. Okay, I was like, wait a minute. At the last possible moment going skeet shooting, Helicopter shoots that howitzer out of the sky. Nearly uncontested, the howitzer almost dealt amazing damage to Helicopter's base. But with a quick reflex, Helicopter defends it, taking down Derbensi's threat. Energy shields galore, these plasmas are splashing back and forth like a disco. Laser beams everywhere, but no damage dealt. Another shot from the cannon. Another hit. But nothing critical has been dealt. Not yet. But it's getting close. Every time these heavy weapons fire, they may not break through the base, but they deal massive damage. Dealing more damage than can be repaired in the cycle time of those weapons. Again, another shotgun blast through the fire and the beams. Oh, ho, ho, no! Oh, no. The greediest of plasmas. When that plasma goes, it always takes the core with it. But what a way to go. Its own beam reflecting perfectly off of helicopters perfectly angled energy shield, sending it right back down the barrel from whence it came, overheating and self-destructing that laser beam, taking out the entirety of Rigger's base with it. Van Sieberglaischer, well, they just lost half their team to half their team's own weapons. 
And there's that penetration that Team Pro Aim was looking for. Penetrating all the way through Durbensin's foundations and taking out one mine with it. That's the kind of damage they're looking to deal. Oh, jeez. Helicopter getting ballsy with it in this vanilla match. Triple EMP. Just exposed and out there. There's going to be a potential shutdown in this round. The plasma and fire beam cutting deep, but not enough to break anything. Not anything significant, at least. The snipers finding the EMPs. Oh boy. Oh boy, the wobble. It's scary to watch this base wobble. Yes, there is stability tech. It's just still scary to see it because it's this blinking around. And that's the kind of base that stability tech is not great. Oh, the door snipe. A second door snipe. Oh, it's devastating. It's a catastrophe. Debensi loses all of their heavy weapons to a single plasma. This is, uh, lasers have been the bane of the German team this time around. Or at least, uh, Ren Supergleiter. As here comes a swarm missile launch. This one's more of a token spite because they can more than any desire to actually launch swarm missiles at their opponent. At this stage, it looks like Team Pro Aim is looking to grind down their Bensi. Rather than penetrate deeply, they're looking to deal as much damage as they can over time and try to slowly whittle them away as their Benzene is... Well, they have access to a lot of economy and they can be incredibly defensive. Though, with a heavy investment into buzzsaws, perhaps their benzene could just be sundered rather quickly. Not quite enough. MCC suffering energy issues. In fact, both players for Team Pro Aim suffering energy production issues. Nothing if you upgrades can't handle, as they do have an upgrade center apiece and have been upgrading their eco. Pro Aim at this point content to. Uh... Pro Aim at this point content to gradually grow their bases and increase their firepower rather than just try to outright end the game, which is usually the way to go. Once ahead, get further ahead is the go-to strategy. Funny story, uh, their Benzene is actually attempting to go for a tier 3, going for the Hail Mary strat, looking to find some location upon the opponent's bases that are entirely undefended. The nuke, not quite making it. Oh ho ho, look at that base tear itself apart. Surviving off of the stability bracing alone, it's enough to keep the base, well, standing despite being literally torn apart, ripped in two, slowly, gradually. L the lateral force is just pulling it apart. But man, it's looking real rough for Durbensi. As we see those buzzsaws and lasers finally chunking through the expansion to the point where Debensin just has to give it up and can't defend it anymore. Firebeam actually penetrating extremely deep, getting to the last layer of defenses before the uh, before the final. But with no more anti-air, this nuke is expected to land here. Looks like Debensin just using some rapidly constructed spaced armor in order to take the hit. As to Benzene is going to get an opportunity to fire that tier 3. Fires it once and is immediately destroyed by the laser beam penetrating clean through to de Benzene's defenses. I'm not sure if this tier 3 was well aimed. I think it might have been a bit far. Definitely a bit far because it certainly didn't land in the map. Which is really rather unfortunate for Debensine because uh 
That was the only weapon they had available to them, and it's about time for Team Pro Aim to wield that massive economic firepower. As you can see, all their weapons are coming online, the cause to damage, breaking through everything, and down they go. Player eliminated. And with that, Team Pro Aim takes this round. Now, there was one moment here I needed to show you guys again, because uh, it's not something you see every day, this kind of reflective firepower. Gotta watch this in nice, slow motion. As here we see on the left, it's the laser beam, and on the right, a single energy shield. Right back from whence they came. And that's it! An entire player eliminated with one laser beam. You'll love to see it. It's a good time all around. <laughs> oh, jeez. It doesn't get old, does it? then one moment while we set the teams and get the match made for this last round in this best of three between uh, Van Sivergleicher and pro -M. And we're off to round three in this best of three. So the victor of this round will take victory in this step of the Forts Pro League and gain their league points, moving them closer to the finals in the final Forts Pro League Season 2 tournament. As here we have on the left-hand side, it is Team Pro Aim, playing as the Armor Dillo Commander. Armor Dillo Commander, of course most known for its defensive plays and opportunity to invest a bit heavier into the economic future of their own forts. They're playing against their opponents, who are playing pretty much the opposite commander. Um, it's Pinch Fist Commander, the commander where you can sell everything for full price, meaning you can create a fort. You can re completely restructure your fort, sell absolutely everything, get yourself a literally skeletal fort with holes in it, and take all the money you made from selling off your internal goods and important organs uh, to bootstrap your everything else, either to get additional economy or more often to get a faster tech speed. So you can get things like heavy weapons tech faster than anyone else, which is just kind of powerful. There's a reason why it was the most powerful commander, the most popular commander for a very, very long time. Ah, yes. Shout out to Travis coming in and rejoining the incursion, or should I say, <laughs> joining the incursion. Welcome back, FPL. Let's go. Let's do this. But congratulations, you've gained access to all the beautiful emotes here on the channel. So all these special access, we're all at Discord. But after all these years, I'm sure you knew that already. <laughs> Welcome back, Travis. Got any uh, good old puns for us? So far, it looks like both teams in this match are content to take things slow in the open, 
which it sounds weird to say given pinch fist never takes anything slow but in truth pinch fist tends to do more heavy weapons rushes than anything else which means that there's not going to be anything meaningful to react to against a pinch fist player for the first four and a half minutes similarly armadillo who has more defensive play styles tends to also not do anything to the enemy team for the first five five and a half minutes So we're going to see the next two minutes or so of lots of hype, lots of construction, and not much in the way of firepower. Looks like neither team is even going to be sending snipers at each other. Uh, I don't even see the uh, the token EMP. So looks like it's a well, like a treaty match. No rush, five minutes. I think everyone's okay with this after those last couple matches. <clears throat> ah. That is a lot of turbines. Like, helicopter going up to five turbines already is a lot of turbines. I mean, of course, it's five turbines for at five upgraded mines, so, like, they're keeping up with their own eco, but... That's a lot of eco for this stage of the game. And that is full economy. Hopefully Helicopter gets to survive the next minute or so, because uh, Helicopter doesn't have a weapon placed at all. And Red Seaver Glacier has four of them, almost complete. Hmm. We do see the weapons selected for each player. Fire beam, plasma beam combo for MCC. MCC not investing heavily into economies as their uh, teammate did. Leaving MCC to actually have weapons out at around a cannon o'clock timing. Not quite as quickly as their direct opponent Derbensi, as you can see the uh, fire beam, I'm sorry, the plasma beam for Derbensi is completing right now, compared to, well, MCC's plasma being a good 15 seconds out, and likely taking the ire of Derbensi, yep, there it is. MCC immediately losing their fire beam to, uh, to Bensi's plasma before <laughs> before MCC's plasma was even constructed. The plasma taking some damage in the process as well, but nothing critical. MCC still has the most important part, which is the plasma, which means it could still be used to cause door snipes and generally cause mess for their opponents, which they're going to absolutely need to do as Team Pro Aim has little to no hope of surviving if a helicopter does not come online. And given that Helicopter is the one who invested incredibly heavily into the economy, uh, it's going to be a moment before they get their weapons aligned. But you, by a moment, I mean Helicopter's got a howitzer, one third of the way completed, and a cannon just placed. Helicopter defending themselves against the incoming howitzer. As Rigor has fired a howitzer at Helicopter. Helicopter doing... Great work using shotguns to preemptively defend against that can that howitzer. Wigger, a moment ago, having lost their their cannon, their follow-up weapon, to a buzzsaw from MCC, which I did not expect. I didn't see that one coming, and neither did Rigger. Uh, that's gonna put a pretty heavy damper on uh, on Team 2's set of weapons. I just want to shout out to Helicopter, who knew the howitzer timing so well that they were literally sitting on the shotgun, waiting for the howitzer to fire, before Rigger even launched the howitzer. That howitzer had no chance of getting across that open space, barring Helicopter just straight whiffing. Is that exposed? No. An interesting decision out of Team 2. I imagine an idea 
born of rigorous canon, which no longer exists. This, uh, Magna Beam for out of Der Benzine, out of Team 2, it exists, which is concerning. Though I'm not sure what they intend to do with it at this point. MCC and Der Benzine at this stage trading blows with their plasmas. But of course, very little damage is dealt without the follow-up shots. Looks like the howitzers are, at this point, only used for anti-air against other howitzers. Ooh, shotguns. Shotguns and plasmas cut deep, but there's still way too many doors. Hey look, the EMP's back. And with no snipers to stop them, neither. Oh boy. Hmm. Yep, shotgun's good. Good shotgun is good. You love to see it. I'm always impressed with the helicopter. Every time helicopter the helicopter is one of my favorite players. They they're just so good at things. Makes me happy. So smooth. There's more fire, slowly burning Durbensi's weapons. But not enough to break. It looks like Durbensi attempted to use the fire beam to defend the howitzer, but all it did is make the shotguns even angrier. Massive damage! Rigor takes heavy hits, and the shotguns follow it up to finish it off. Rigor falls, but that pro Eam takes a massive advantage in the final round of this best of three. The Magna Beam, firing in spite. But it's... <laughs> Magna Beams, of course, don't actually deal damage. Although, if I recall correctly, they can be used against... Is it howitzers, or... I forget... As Magna Beams don't affect enemy weapons, for the most part. Uh, but that's only for the most part, and doesn't apply to every... Is it deck cannons? Or is it howitzers that are affected by Magna Beams? I forget, I should test. As we have a concede out of the last of Ranzir Virgleicher. With that, Pro-Aim takes victory. Moving on to the next round. Well played, well played. Well done, well done. You love to see it. All right. Next up, it looks like we have Team Yes versus Team Ranciver Gleicher. Quite my question answered. It's Howie, by the way, but to a lesser extent. Yes. So there was a world where Ben seen there manages to fire that Magna Beam as, or perhaps preemptively, as the howitzer is firing adjusting the trajectory just enough to knock it into its own doors self-destructing the howitzer and taking helicopter entirely down with it which would be hilarious and incredibly infuriating uh i'm sure
Okay. Flynn, what are you doing? Why are you like this? Alright, so it looks like... Map 1. There we go. Players are in. The match is made. We'll be starting momentarily. And yet another map from the Fort's map making contest. So very excited. Helicopter MVP, helicopter MVP indeed. Okay. Also, shout out to Ekuji coming in and joining the incursion. Congratulations, friend. You've gained access to all the beautiful emotes here in the channel, as well as your special access rule in Discord. Welcome to the party. I need more tea. Remember, guys, that we are not the only POV here. There are two other streamers in this lobby showcasing these very same matches in different languages. I am doing English. We have Salzwerk casting in German and Gustigel casting in French. If you guys prefer any of those other languages or simply wish to see the variant's flavor associated, make sure to check them out, all of which are currently live on Twitch. Of course us being here live on the YouTube side of the world. <laughs> Did it not work this time, 42? Oh. Uh... All right, we'll give it another moment. One more attempt. Question from chat, stream letter? Yes, uh, at the end of this, we will be shutting off the delay so that we can have much more active banter back and forth and enjoy some good old gaming with the community. <laughs> spam 100 emote. I, I actually like that new spam feature where it lets you guys do the uh, the pretty little overlay pop-up. Mm. 
it's uh, quite satisfying. Let's you guys get your spam going without actually breaking things. The map making contests need to happen more. You love those. They're very good. I like them. I like them a lot. And they make... They really do showcase a lot of the best maps. Because the community is always making maps. <laughs> but like... The map making contest really shows them off. And also, to some degree, pushes the map makers to complete them. In a way that is... Uh, satisfactory to the average player. Or should I say more average player friendly? And it really makes them great for things such as the Force Pro League. We're playing on a map that you guys may recognize from the last competition, from the mass contest, uh, 2v2 Boonies. As here we have on the left side of 2v2 Boonies, it is a uh, team Ran Glider, Rigor and uh, Benzin, playing as the Architect Commander as per their uh, logo sake. They're facing off against their opponents. It's Team Yes, Great Wu and uh, uh, Great Wo and Flynn Shadow. We saw them play earlier, but this time they're playing as the Armor Dillo Commander, and not doing any kind of buzzsaw AP sniper cheese. At least, not yet. Although I would love to see them try to do such a thing against uh, Team uh, against Team uh, <laughs> Run Saver Glitcher here. I suspect they'd be more vulnerable to it than Team Veterans. Albeit, it almost incredible. It, that was so. That was so tantalizingly close to working. I just want to see it work. <clears throat> hmm. Alas. Here we seem to have some fairly standardish builds out of each player. This map, of course, a little bit different in terms of shape. So we get these long trunk investments with expansions on them. We see this from either side. This makes for some uh, adjustments to the build order. Also, we have the Armadillo team doing the Armadillo things, namely... Namely, going for an upgrade center with additional mines. Although I am surprised to see Great Wo not actually getting any tier 1 tech. At least aside from an upgrade center. Which is concerning to say the least. Okay, there we go. Two and a half minutes in, we see a tier 1 tech out of Great Wo. Um, for comparison, both Derbensine and Rigor have their tier 2 tech. Their heavy weapons tech, about halfway completed. Okay. AP minigun. Why are you like this? He's just getting it. Like, it's not part of his plan. It's not part of the strategy. He's just got an AP minigun because he can, and for no other reason. That's, that's it. It is fun, though. I'm okay with this. Token EMP, doing token EMP things, shutting down the primary core, at least for Durbenzi. Oh my. The EMP getting shut down once, although it looks like Team 1 is not building a sniper to punish the EMP's existence, so much as just a couple gunners to prevent it from doing anything. I suppose that is similarly as effective. We do see heavy weapons out of everyone involved. 
By that I mean everyone on team one. Uh, team two is uh, somewhat behind. And team two is very undefended right now. That's an understatement. They have a grand total of one piece of metal between them and their core. <laughs> and uh, they still have a little bit of time, although that time really they, they should not have bet on having that time because that time is uh, running a little short but he here we are they're certainly not defended from most heavy weapon combos while any of them would be okay to survive a single plasma uh, they would not survive a combo of say fire beam plasma and that is exactly what's coming toward them in a few seconds Oh dear. What are they planning? That's just a portal. It's just a return to sender. Okay. In a strange twist of fate, I think Team Yes actually fires first here. Not quite. Not quite. Okay. Great Woe's cannon surviving uh, by virtue of not being attacked. Flint Shadow, same situation. Uh, but their benzene is cleared to open fire at this point. And Rigor is, well, I think a bit bloodthirsty after having missed their first shot. My question is, where are they sending their next? Is I'm entirely certain Rigor has a direct shot on Great Woe's core. From the top, where there's just completely undefended. And I don't know uh, if Rigor yeah, notices totally. that. Ooh. A lot of damage. But nothing broke internally. Splashing damage everywhere. But Great Woe just takes the... Uh-oh. Uh, cannon exposed. Oh, that's bad. Oh, it's bad. Okay. Uh, Great Woe losing a cannon. But doesn't actually take that much deformation on their base. They can survive this and just recover it. Buzzsaws being a nightmare once again. Cannon anti-air, taking out the howitzer, keeping <laughs> keeping Great Will alive, that's for sure, using a wind turbine to defend their cannon. Very well done. That plasma still not finding the weak spot on Great Will's base. And Great Will is still not fixing it. I think no one has noticed. I mean, if no one notices, is it really that much of a weak spot? I think at this point, Great Woe is just... Oh, I think he found it. Oh. But a beautiful door snipe, Flint Shadow takes out the fire beam. Uh, Rigor loses half of their weaponry. Though I suspect it will be replaced shortly. Uh, the question is, does Rigor try to capitalize on the... Nope. Too late. Energy Too shield late. online. Great Woe has discovered the weakness and has removed it. Swing and a miss. Very smart of the Benzene to use the buzzsaw to disconnect that cannon so it can't be used for Antier. Solid hit. Solid second hit. Purposely not repairing to be able to fire back. Gosh. Team 2 is just taking a pummeling. 
I'm surprised Great Rose Cannon is still with us. It's, uh, taking a pretty heavy hit here. But those cannons for Flynn Shadow are starting to add up. Like, they're, they're hitting the same spot pretty consistently and just getting real deep through those doors. Digging through metal like nothing else. Again, Great Rose Cannon is just dedicated anti air. I mean, it's working out for him. It's keeping him alive, which is the important part. That was dangerously close. The, that was more than dangerously close. That that hurt. Flame Shadow losing their heavy weapons tech and bringing their core down to 21%. And there it is. Great Will loses their entire expansion below. Taking with it two cannons and losing access to two mines, as well as any and all stability it once it once provided. That is painful for Great Will. Given they lost the cannon, they no longer have any consistent way of defending against their opponent's howitzer. I mean, Durban seems right and proper free to just pummel Great Will into the Dark Age, and I think that's exactly what we're going to see here. Very, very solid hit directly to the front. Oh boy. Hmm. How? That's very, a very close miss. How? It might not be pixel perfect, but it's not far. That was uh, very close. That's not something you see every day, but it happens. It hap That kind of shot happens like once a tournament, and about half the time, it's something catastrophic. Ooh, that was almost a door snipe on the fire beam. But great woe just getting pummeled which is what we expected given this context but it's it's still satisfying to watch it happen you know all in all this match has not been uh that's not sure this match has been pretty one-sided although it's it's been one-sided but not in an overpowering way so much as it consistently Heading one direction kind of way. Oh dear. With the fall of Great Woe. There's only one player left standing. His name is Flynn Shadow and he's got full control over the entirety of Team 2's bases. The derelict base of Great Woe has been... Re partially repaired and now upgraded with a swarm missile launcher. Can Flynn Shadow make a comeback here? As Flynn Shadow is going to have to deal with a howitzer and three cannons out of Durbenzine. And a fire beam and three plasmas out of Rigor. Rigor does not have the energy production to fire all that. But he does have the storage. <laughs> he does have the storage. So they may get some pretty nasty burst fire coming out of uh, Rigor here. Which is exactly what we're seeing. Gosh. Rand Severglitcher focusing their fire entirely on the weapons and placements of Flint Shadow. Just splashing the damage around perfectly such that they did not actually break through anything. But uh the damage they dealt, just the sheer digging into the existing armor, um, Flynn Shadow can't replace that. At least not in any meaningful timeline. If another round of that kind of damage is dealt, Flynn Shadow is going to lose everything. Yeah, here it goes. 
the entire cannon ar array, the entire cannon battery has been broken. Flint Shadow has no weapons and is rapidly losing defenses around their core. Yep, piece by piece, chunk by chunk, Flynn Shadow is losing components of their base. Oh boy. It's ripping apart. Yeah. I'm sorry, that looked like an incredibly satisfying way to go. Did you see the way his base just crunched into three pieces and fell apart? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That was, uh, that was great, as Ransiver <laughs> Gleitcher <laughs> rips apart Flynn Shadow's final base, the remnant of it all. That was, uh, that was nice. I want to see that again. In fact, let's do that exactly. The final moments of Flynn Shadow's fort as it becomes devastated by combined weapon fire. Yeah, yeah. I like this game. It's a good time. Okay, so we want to switch the teams up. All right. Looks like we're about ready to jump into the next round as well. Great woo! I think that's Benson. Oh, Benson, you're right. Alright, Benson asking for a moment. And so it shall be granted. Let's do this. And we're off once more into the fray. Round two. And here we are back on Balls, one of the fan favorite maps. On the left hand side, it is Great Rue and Flynn Shadow. Team Yes, playing as the Architect Commander, one of the more powerful commanders, or at least one of the most popular commanders these days. They'll be playing against their opponent's team, Ren Siever Glacier. Derbensin and Rigger are playing as the Warthog commander. The ever presence and extraordinarily powerful commander is uh, most known for empowering their heavy weapons. So we could reasonably expect to see heavy weapons out of Ren Siever Glacier here at the right side team. Whereas left side team, uh, there's no real, I'm going to say, incredibly popular build order for Architect. Architect's whole gimmick is that it's incredibly forgiving and that you can kind of do anything you want 
and still catch up to your opponents. So most of the time what players want to do is to invest heavily into economy and then catch up to their opponents using the commander active. You tend to see more eco-favored strategies out of Architect because of that reason. But as it seems, I'm not seeing any major signs of early aggression out of either team here. We're likely to go into a heavy weapons rush style of game, which is a little surprising to me. Uh, very often on this map we get to see swarm missile rushes. You may still see a swarm missile rush out of Flynn Shadow. Nope. There goes the uh, munition plant. Guritwo also building up for a heavy weapons production facility. A little bit behind on his placement, actually. Interesting. Triple battery for Guritwo. Didn't see that one coming. But, yeah, that's the confirmation. Uh, every player in this lobby is going for, uh, going for heavy weapons. Let's see how this turns out then. Uh, Greatwo will then go for, based on their build order, I expect to see them go for howitzers. Let's see, to Benzine as well. Rigor also looking to go for howitzers, I think. No. Has Greatwo no, no. not placed That's... tech yet? Uh, Greatwo has not placed tech yet, no. Huh. Which is confusing to me. I, I don't know if they thought they placed tech and are started to build up for the howitzer, which I suspect is what happened. A uh, rigor going for plasma firebeam combo. To Benzene, looks like howitzer. Mm. They didn't get the extra battery. I think I know what's happening. They're sharing tech. Ah, okay. That's not something you see every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That explains the placement. Okay. Tech sharing should also give Gritwo the necessary. Uh... Yeah, yeah. So we'll see how it's replaced for Gritwo here. Probably a cannon as well. Yeah, that surprises me. Then um, I would usually when I see players do this, they also throw an upgrade center in there because that enables one player to get the upgrade center and start Too investing into eco. I mean, I guess saving for two Howies is an alternative to the upgrade center thing, but like, you could also have Howitzer at the appropriate timing and upgraded mines in the process. Eh. I'm curious to see how this will turn out. Uh, double Howitzer is devastating, is what it is. Uh, double Howitzer is incredibly devastating. Um. And Sivuglesha may not, is unlikely to be prepared for this, unless they saw the tech swap, which m like they may have seen, they probably should have seen, uh, but if they saw that, then they may suspect this is coming. If they didn't see it, they're going to be in big trouble. Uh, they're probably going to be in big trouble regardless, because uh, double howitzer hits really hard. There's no way to take that without just exploding um so that's unfortunate well unless big amounts of anti-air which they don't have right now yeah hmm. my concern is that flynn shadow doesn't have any weapons of their own for all of this all they did is get two howitzers under Great Twos control. Which, while fine, three howitzers, uh, two howitzers, sorry. Which, while fine, is not amazing, and it's oh, all gone. No. Insufficient defenses around Great Twos double howitzer emplacement. Um, a single howitzer round from Derbensi 
deletes the entire expansion, not just the howitzer emplacements, but the entire expansion onto the lower ball of Grey 12. Which is not great for uh, Team Yes. Um. Hmm. They of will course. have to compensate using Architects, yeah. They will have to do that, yes. Which they can do, and they are attempting to do. It just still puts them at a significant disadvantage, as they've managed to architect their way up to a single cannon, compared to the two howitzers of Derbensi, and how it, and fire beam plaza beam of rigor, which is a fairly substantial uh, firepower discrepancy. Okay. Just cannon from above, taking a corner off of uh, Dirk Benson's base and just carrying on like nothing happened. That's painful to watch. Howitzers are so strong, man. Just wiping out chunks of Great War every time. Well, it looks like every gunner has been destroyed for Great War there. And once De Benzine figures that out, which they seem to have done, uh, we're going to see the howitzer come swinging. Probably right now. Well, Architect Commander is suddenly <laughs> redistracting all those machine gunners real quick. Uh, and while this is happening down here, an entire laser beam wiped out Finn Shadow's last remaining cannon. Those machine gunners come back so quickly under the commander active. But now Durbensin is kitted to fire both howitzers in rapid succession, which should be able to penetrate Gritwo's defenses here, despite their defenses being quite good. Reconnects immediately, Buzzsawed. You know, that shotgun's doing r did really well for Great War there. A standard cannon being reconstructed for Flynn Shadow. Interesting note that the uh, that Team Yes is still tech sharing here. Woof! Great will getting hit by how it's around, and it hurt a lot. Wondering how Team Yes is gonna switch out of this. As yes, Flynn Shadow's got a couple swarm missiles going. But that's an incredibly risky position to put them in. Oh, yeah, that was? Uh, uh that's too, too late. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like he timed out about half a second before yeah. getting howitzered. Definitely wouldn't have saved him. 
but it's painful to see just on an emotional level. Yeah. Yeah, Team 2 is... They're coming to that conclusion themselves. Yep. Yeah. It looks like the Ben scene is going to have to reconstruct their weapons platform here in an effort to get those howitzers to fire upwards. Which they should be able to do, given um, massive re-engineering. Rigor, on the other hand, just collapsed their own fort by themselves. Rigor literally just built so many heavy weapons on top of each other that they just collapsed. That's that's just what happened there. Which is incredibly painful for uh, Ran Sieber Glacier here. Is that just delays the inevitable, I suppose. I say inevitable as if Flynn Shadow hasn't reclaimed the entirety of Great Woe's recent base and now just has everything at their disposal. Including its flaws. As once again the <laughs> lower ball is shaved clean of all things. Rigor, on the other hand, is getting bullied. Um, after having lost their weapons platform, they also lost their minds with it, and <laughs> what's left of their eco is vulnerable and exposed, and is getting shelled by cannon fire. Oh dear. Although... Finn Shadow did manage to construct an additional uh, howitzer. There's not a whole lot of anti here for Team Ren Simpiglasher. That's such an odd angle, but the nuke makes it through. That is such a risky angle, but the nuke does make it through to get some damage done, which is pretty good. How? How did that flak not kill? How its surrounds are so beefy. I think, yeah. For a flak to kill uh, how it's around, I think it takes all three or four shots. Mm -hmm. Like all three total shot shrapnels. Yeah. It's a bit tough. Yeah, that's about what I expected out of the nuke. The chances that it makes it under or between these balls is just not, just not a, not a thing. At least not a consistent thing. And now we have this giant amalgam of a base on the left out of Lanchetto versus the two separate and rather dense bases of, uh oh. Less dense, uh, less dense, as the Benzene is vulnerable to a drop shot from on high. And that's what Flynn Shadow is aiming for. Doesn't quite make it. Oh my but god. <laughs> so many buzzsaws shearing clean through. Um, that puts Team Yes at a significant advantage here. And by a large margin. Um... Wow, Team Ren Sievergleitra, despite having a seemingly insurmountable advantage just moments ago, things have turned around, and it's not looking good for them anymore. With a single plasma beam to Rigger's name, um, what are they going to do to make a comeback in this? Is that well, nuke he could once again? All the bottom fort. That I think is his best hope, mostly because. Mostly because uh, Derbensin's weapon array, weapon battery is still present. But getting down there intact and hanging on to it is very difficult. Especially given Rigor just lost more mines. And also, Flynn Shadow's got just a kill box of buzzsaws. 
I think I think Flynn Shadow's got this. The Nuke makes it through for once. Rigor disconnected from every expansion. They have no income anymore. Down to a single mine. Their base covered in smoke. All their technology is gone. Every mine is gone. This is it. Like, there's no coming back from this. This is the elimination of Rigor in this round. The smoke preventing the uh, extinguishing of the blaze as Rigor slowly burns the ground, unable to do anything about it. That's such a painful way to go. Death by smoke. Oh boy. Well played team, yes. You love to see it. Unless you're Ruger. That was painful. That that's painful to experience every time. As someone who has been in that position, it's painful every time. Alright, that puts us on to round three, yeah. Yes. All right. <laughs> yeah, he missed. I feel like you're just picking whatever the opposite one that they're choosing, <laughs> just so Not that you can tell them they're wrong. <laughs> exactly. It's like I have the power, no one will ever know. Okay, so you can swap, I guess. I could screen my random number generator. It's okay. I, I don't. <laughs> no one's genuinely making that accusation. <laughs> it's just funny to think about. <laughs> of course. Oh, jeez. That, that was a good match. That was a very good match. I like that match. And so this should be the last match that we see today for the Pro League, of course. Ah, yes. Some of the best games for some of the best fans. If you guys want to see more of these, make sure to hit that subscribe button because most of these are actually not going to be streamed as these matches are done on the players' time, on the players' schedules. Rather, instead of being streamed at our normal stream times, what we do is we just record them and upload them as videos later. So if you guys want to catch these matches and some of these best games and all this massive chaos that you guys have enjoyed thus far, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a video next time it goes live. But for now, we're jumping into round three of this best of three. Alrighty then. Here we go. Here on the left hand side, it is, it is Team Rensiver Kleitra, Derbensin, and Rigor. Playing as the Pinch Fist Commander on Vanilla Large. Wingman. Wingman 2v2. Yes, Wingman. This is, what's the difference? Uh, <laughs> wingman 2v2. Uh, this is, of course, the Commander, which is most known for its heavy weapons rushing. And, well, greedy rushes in general. This is actually one of the maps that popularized the... Uh, Pinch Fist Heavy Weapons Rush, just because it was one of the more popular maps at the time when people discovered it, and it just kind of went rampant from there. We will get to see, hopefully soon, how these, how this turns out, as this, as their opponents, Team Yes on the right hand side, are playing the Armadillo Commander, and we already, this already tells a story, the way the way uh, Flynn Shadow is, is building their base here. 
or not. Flint Shadow, what are you doing? Is you're not playing fire? Okay. <laughs> It's like you're not design. you're not firework. What are you doing? <laughs> oh jeez, we've seen armadillo many a time before. The um, armadillo commander is very well known for these more defensive play styles, and alongside it, the heavy eco investment just goes hand in hand with it. So I am not at all surprised to see things like heavy investment into eco at the cost of technology. As we notice here, Team 2 has no heavy weapons tech even placed, whereas Team 1 has their heavy weapons tech halfway completed. This is fairly standard for it. Nothing at all surprising. Team 2, of course, also being a bit ahead on the economy side of things, having six mines, whereas Team 1 is still finishing up their sixth mine. You can see, like, like they're Benson back here just placing their sixth and final mine for that sweet delicious metal economy well that was almost a game over uh, Rigor <laughs> getting door sniped by a buzzsaw uh, great will here dealing great damage with their buzzsaw they've got a pair of buzzsaws and they are angry chopping down wind turbines and well base components like Rigor going to be going for a howitzer hasn't yet built a platform to construct the howitzer, so we'll see how that how that gets placed. Uh, Derbensine also going for munitions plants, but not howitzer, so we do see Derbensine placing their first standard cannon. Great was still no heavy weapons tech. Three and a half minutes in. No, I have no idea what's going on over there. Uh, but Flint Shadow going from high eco into energy production, into energy weapons, heavy energy weapons. Team 2's build order just looks like a mess to me. Like, I get, don't know what Great Wo is going for. And Flint Shadow, I see what he's going for, but it looks like a mess. Whereas. Rent Siever Gleitra, they're a bit messy in that they were somewhat delayed, but they at least have their stuff. It's easy to see what they're doing, and they're progressing with it rather quickly. It's not perfectly executed, but it is easy to see what they're doing. Great Woat is... I mean, I, they're going heavy weapons tech now. After the four and a half minute mark. Okay, well... Howitzer build? Okay. Well... <laughs> that's happening. Um, like, they don't even have an upgrade center, so they didn't even go heavy eco. They just went eco fur. Okay. Well, you know what? We'll, we'll see. Uh, I'm not the one playing. Uh, we'll get to see how that turns out for them. Uh, team... Team Yes is just kind of in the same position as Team Rensaver Gleitra, just like a solid minute behind yep. or more. So I am interested to see how this is going to work out for them as the Bensing has been ready to fire for a hot second here. A rigor is not quite ready to fire just yet. I imagine the Bensing is waiting for rigor to pick a target and then they just delete someone. And both players, both players and Team US are primed for deletion. Looks like the target is Great Wo. And I don't, I'm, I'm not sure Debensing has, Debensing definitely does not have the angle to shoot Great Wo. So I think they just gotta piecemeal it. A solid shot from uh, Derbensin takes out uh, Flynn Shadow's firebeam. Or at least one of them? I think he had two firebeams? Yeah, two firebeams. Another cannon out of rigor. Man, 
And Siva Glacia is not messing around with their cannon placements. They are going super heavy with a lot of firepower. Flint Shadow doesn't have the energy yet to fire their weapon combo. This map does have a rather notably strong wind floor, so we will see turbines being uh, a little bit less effective than usual. Great Rose machine guns and anti air are being hunted. Again, Fin Shadow running out of energy. I'm interested again in seeing this uh, Magna Beam out of Fin Shadow. Oof. Rough timing on Fin Shadow's fire beam. Empowering the cannon shells, which then it slapped himself. But it looks like Rigor actually lost one of his cannons. I believe he's selling it off. So Maybe to a fire beam, but yeah. Yeah, it was getting hit by fire beams, and I think he sold it off. Yeah. Probably. So I don't, I don't, I didn't hear it explode. It certainly didn't deform the base at all. Which just means Flynn Shadow's fire beam is more effective than I expected. I'm still curious about this uh, Magna Beam, because the Magna Beam, it can affect the Howitzer, which means it can act as a Howitzer defense by virtue of throwing off the aim of the Howitzer, just by, you know, shooting at a base with it. Of course, it's no, it, the thing is notorious for attracting sniper rounds to itself, which makes it risky, and it is, at this point, um, not able to fire at all. Oof. Cannon from above. Great Rogue takes a hit. Oh. Durbensid's cannons. They are singing, and Flint Shadow is stinging. He's taking cannon shell after cannon shell directly to his front door. No idea what the bike is for. Well, uh, the Magna Beam is getting a door, so it should be able to fire here in a moment. Ooh, this machine gun is taking out the howitzer, but just barely. Armadillo active, quick repairs. Oh boy. Rigger's base kind of sort of collapsing in on itself, selling off his cannon again, owing to, uh, owing to deformation. Painful to see. Oh boy. Those kind of shots, shots are on point. Mm -hmm. Oh. The fire beam. No. Ooh. Ooh! Oh, is this? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, this is it. Very dead. A quick little surf and rigor goes down for the count. Debensin with those beautiful cannons. Still a towering presence of death and destruction on the field. Um, the problem now they face is Greto and Flint Shadow have weapons. And are very angry. And their benzene is a very hard target to miss. A very hard target to miss. It may have taken them a while, but Great Woe and Flynn Shadow have managed to bring weapons down upon their opponents. And, uh, well, despite not having any real advantage to it, just aimed better. And have uh, thus far taken a massive advantage. They forced advantage onto themselves and removed a player. Oof. I'm not sure what they were planning there. I don't think the cannon has an, a poor dingle sufficient for that. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking they were trying to fire the cannon up and over. 
Yep. But the cannon just doesn't have the uh, firing arc for it. Yeah, it looks like they're putting a portal back there, too. Mm. Is that a tier 3 portal? Looks like, looks like yeah. Hmm. But with a smart uh, magnet being sh uh, shot, it could be meaningful. Could be. It's for the howitzer. Okay. Hmm. What's the plan? I mean, this is not going down. <laughs> this is never going down. That's what I tell you. <laughs> it's a howitzer. It's very slow. It'll come down eventually. Just uh, not likely uh, on target well, at least. Yeah. I mean, howitzers do have like a two minute lifespan. Whoa. <laughs> it actually hits and it hits the energy production, which is an incredibly valuable point to hit at this stage. The thing with, with the howitzers is that they behave like mortars and that they don't have deviation. Yeah, so you could be 100% so, precise with them. Exactly. Just also means that Durban Seed needs Ancier. Oh. Okay. Now that yeah, is a potentially a good incredibly shot. good power strategy. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> for Team Yes, uh, Machine Gunner is quite adept at taking those down. Especially with this much uh, air time. Yeah, I think it was shot down. Oh no. Oh, whoa. Oh, whoa, that's it. God. Oh my god. It's your three howitzer. <laughs> Off the back of a tier there. three howitzer, Team Yes takes this round, and this best of three. Holy yes. smokes! I am impressed. I am very impressed. We do definitely do not see that every day, and that makes me so many levels of happy. You know what that means. We are absolutely watching that in the replay because that's not <laughs> something we're going to get to see every day. Holy smokes. It's so... It makes me happy on so many levels. Just with cannons coming across the field, laser beams igniting everything, and then out of nowhere, in comes the howitzer from space. It's gentle roar. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Forts Pro League. If you guys want to see more matches just like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button because the Forts Pro League is going to be going for quite some time. If you guys want to see it in the native German tongue, make sure to check out Salzburg's channel. And I believe Gust Eagle is casting this particular bunch in French. You guys can check that back or send it off to your French friends. But yeah. that is going to be wrapping up the Forts Pro League matches for today, as we're going to have several more weeks of Forts Pro League matches coming out. And uh, I'm super excited about this. The Forts Pro League is so good! <laughs> oh my. And uh, you know what time it is. 
it's about time to do our normal everyday stream. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be shutting down the stream for a moment, turning off the turning off the uh, live stream, turning off the delay. That way we guys we can actually we can actually interact with you guys. So I will be right back.